Hi everybody and welcome to another digital piano review. My name is Stu Harrison, we're here at Miriam Pianos and today we are taking a look at Kawai's ES8 digital piano. We're gonna be covering everything on this instrument, talking about its action, talking about the sound engine, all of this beautiful luscious tone that we get out of this instrument, and of course covering all the features that you get with the ES8. If it's the first time to the channel, we'd really appreciate if you subscribed. We love the support, and of course, we'd like to keep you up to date with all things piano. So let's get started right away and dive into the Kawhi ES8. Hey everybody, so let's get into the sound of this ES8 digital piano. This instrument is loaded up with Kawai's Harmonic Imaging XL technology that sounds very fancy. What does it actually mean? Well, this is about the fifth or sixth generation of Harmonic Imaging uh, chipsets or you know algorithmic uh, updates or enhancements that Kawai's come out with since their Harmonic Imaging technology hit in I think the mid 2000s is when this uh, really uh, first came about. So they've been working on this for a while. And the ES8 was one of the first instruments uh, to receive that chipset, as well as the updated SKEX Concert Grand sample set. So this was a big leap forward in terms of sound technology when the ES first came out. And quite frankly, the ES8 is still standing up to even the most stiff competition from uh, Roland and Kawhi. We actually have also just done a Roland FP90 versus a Kawhi ES8. You can hear the direct comparison there. You'd be surprised even a few years after this ES8 has been out of the market, how well it continues to stand up uh, to the competition in terms of the realism of the sound, in terms of how complex that tone is. Uh, it's, it's equipped with a 256 note uh, polyphony uh, capability or potential, uh, which for acoustic piano playing, you're really never going to run out or max out 256. Even with a basic accompaniment track that's that's running uh, through sort of a MIDI triggered um, uh, accompaniment track, it's going to be very difficult to run out 256. So you've got plenty of polyphony and you've got this lovely SKEX sample set. very dynamic sound and that's one of the first things you notice when you're playing it is when you're really down in the lower volume ranges it's this dark very luscious sound but the minute you start to build some volume start to get all of these upper partials out of it it brightens the sound up now this is something that happens to an extent with almost all really good high quality digital pianos but I notice it more on this than most this dynamic that this dynamic uh, nature of the tone uh, this has um, a few dozen sounds on it. It's not an instrument that comes with like these 300 or 400 sounds uh, that you might be uh, looking at or, or you know, researching with something like the Roland FP90. Um, the number of tones is quite low, but the quality of each of the tones is really quite exceptional. There's only a few patches on here where I would go, eh, that's you know, a bit of a, bit of a poor effort, but for the most part, you're looking at sounds which are really lush, very, very believable. Wow, that's got such a nice broadness to it. That's the EX Concert Grand Sample we were just listening to right there. Jazz piano, warm grand, pop grand. It's nice. 
nice. SK5. Oh, that's gorgeous. Not quite the same overtone uh, complexity that you get out of the full SK. But still quite lovely. The E piano sounds on here. I love. They're thick, they're very warm. The tremolo effect and the amp simulator on here is quite believable, believe it, uh, to be honest. So you can affect like the amp simulation, uh, the drive effect. So you get that really nice crunch if you want it there. And even the B3 organ stuff is really cool. It's great. Um, you've got harpsichords and mallets, strings, choirs, um, and a couple of uh, bass tones on there as well. Very easy to match two sounds together in a blend. Uh, you just press and hold the two categories you want and you get there. It's also easy to split the keyboard into two, so you get one sound down here and one sound uh, up there. Um, driving all of this, is this beautiful onboard speaker system. Now on paper, this is not that powerful. I think it's 30 watts in total, 15 watts a side. That used to be considered pretty beefy. These days when you've got like an FP90 coming out with 60 watts, you'd think, okay, the ES8 might now start to feel underpowered compared to what other companies are putting out there. This is really not the case. Uh, and I think it owes to the fact that Kawhi's designed the speaker boxes in here to be really super uber efficient. We've got like air inlets on the bottom of the machine. You can sort of see them. It almost looks like it's kind of a subwoofery looking air inlet. I don't know speakers that well, uh, but I know that that looks fancy when you look at it from the bottom of the ES8. So the speaker boxes are designed sort of as self-contained units and it's got two two-way speakers in there and then these sort of air ports on the bottom. I don't know what how that contributes to the sound. Maybe somebody can, you know, uh, toss a comment in there and let us know exactly why that might make such an impact. But what I can tell you is that for 30 watts this thing generates a ton of sound. Like enough that if you're in a small or even a medium room and you're playing for yourself, you do not, under any circumstance, need an extra amplifier to pull up, plug it in to a stereo uh, to reinforce the tone. You've got plenty here. Anyway, so that rounds out our discussion on sound for the ES8. Now let's dive in to the action. The action on the ES8 is what they call their RH3 action. This is an action uh, which they have um, installed in a number of their uh, digital pianos. I think you can also find now a modified version of the RH3 from Kawhi in Nord's new Grand model, which is really cool, but not surprising because 
you are talking about a very satisfying and a very accurate piano action. So it's got all the basics covered. We've got a nice uh, micro texture on the white key, sort of similar to like a Neotex, as well as the black. So you've got good grip on there and it also helps to absorb a little bit of extra moisture. It has the escapement in there uh, to add that extra little kind of flip about two thirds of the way down, a little bit more realism. And it's got the triple sensor. This is a big deal for anybody who's using this for production or recording because when you look at the MIDI output from Kawhi's triple sensor system and you compare it to other MIDI outputs, it is really accurate. So you're going to have to do less velocity editing if you're uh, taking a MIDI feed off here uh, for any sort of tracking or recording. Um, which just is going to save time, but it's also more satisfying. It's just, it, it does add to the sensitivity and the realism of the overall piano playing experience. So top points for the action. Um, I would say that uh, this action is designed or is going to feel a little better to people who already have some acoustic piano experience because there is um, a bit of an intentional um, sponginess to the bottom of the key bed that, that simulates what actually does happen on like a real uh, grand piano, which you might not be used to if you're only coming at this with prior digital piano experience. You get it used to it very quickly, but it can initially give you the feel uh, that it's kind of a heavier or a slightly slower action. It's really not the case, it's just your finger getting used to that extra little cushion on the bottom. Now let's talk about features. We've already discussed the fact that it's got um, a nice selection of uh, sort of fundamental piano patches or tones, your pianos, e-pianos, organ, yada yada. In terms of other functionality on here, Kawhi's virtual technician allows you to go into the piano sounds and edit various parameters like how much the lid is being simulated open, string resonance, uh, you know, hammer sound, uh, damper resonance, let off sound, or, you know, key off sound, all those kinds of things. It's really quite interesting. Um, and it's fun to get in there and play around and edit them a little bit. Um, other functions, it's got a basic recorder. You can record uh, USB audio straight into like an MP3 or WAV format with a USB key plugged in. That's handy. Um, but it also has intelligent accompaniment. Uh, and what's nice is you can access that very easily without having to get into a menu or um, uh, hook up like a peripheral device like a tablet or a smartphone. So you just press rhythm section right there. It gives you the option of selecting your accompaniment mode. Um, I personally find that one finger mode is actually the most useful um, if you're going to be, you know, uh, playing with some more complex uh, harmony because it gives you the most amount of control. Um, and then you've got the uh, option to select through various rhythms. And then there's sort of an A, B uh, rhythm mode uh, to most of these. So I'm just going to play this really quickly so you can hear it. And then you can flip into the next variation. So you can have some fun with that as well. This has the USB port so that you can connect this to the computer. It also has uh, discrete audio outputs so that you can run this into an amplifier or a PA without defeating the local speakers. Uh, that's separate from your headphone jacks of course and you've got two quarter inch headphone jacks on either side at the front. Uh, that's kind of handy. And the ES8 also comes in two colors and the option for a full furniture stand with a triple pedal system or just the slab as you're seeing now 
with the single pedal system. So there you have the Kawai ES8. It's been out for a few years, but an instrument that's still delivering tremendous value and a great musical experience to people out on the market. I recommend this to a wide variety of customers and a wide variety of settings. Uh, it's great for people who need an all-in-one portable unit, uh, who are really focused on the piano experience and uh, don't need a huge amount of power like to fill up a large room or they're gonna be tying into a PA. Works really, really well for that. I think this is perfect as well uh, for small spaces, um, apartment living, condo living, townhouse living, where you have the occasional need to relocate it. Um, because yes, you can get digital pianos out there uh, that are you know, in a similar price range and deliver similar specs or maybe even slightly better, but they're in these big bulky cabinets, tough to move around. The ES8 stays portable. It makes it really easy to either change locations or just move it from one room to another. And of course, for people who are thinking about using this in some sort of a production setting, even if it's you know, semi-professional or professional, this action and the triple sensor, the MIDI output on this, is good enough to be used in absolutely any pro setting. So lots to like here. Hope you've enjoyed the review. Good luck with your shopping. And of course, try and get to a showroom and try one yourself. Please let us know what you thought in the comments. We'll do our best to respond to every single one. We're here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison, and we'll see you back for more reviews shortly. Fun as